Hi everyone, this is Andre from Chrome FX Films here, and welcome to part 6 of my 2D game development tutorial series. Building off of the scene that we built in our last tutorial, level design, we are now going to program the player to pick up the keys, uh, unlock the door only when you have the keys, and a health system so you can actually get hurt and die. This is the code for the uh, movement of the player that we programmed before. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come down here and in this collision function, we're going to add a new collision, uh, a new if statement, sorry, that is going to change a variable, a, a true or false variable when we touch the key. So let's type that in. So if the collider uh, touches a game object with the tag key one. Scroll down here. Okay. We want this value that we have not created yet, no variable, but we'll make this value true. So key one obtained equals true. Let's come up here and make the variable private variable so we can't change it in the inspector never title your variables with a capital letter in the uh, beginning that's an unwritten rule of programming and that should actually work save it oh wait I have an error oh not supposed to be capitalized. There we go. Select the key. Let's tag it. Key one. All right. Sign the tag. And now when we hit that key, actually you should have a collider on it. Let's make it a very small collider. So this key can disappear when we hit it. Oh, yeah. Okay, shouldn't be a trigger. Let's make the key disappear when you hit it, too. I believe that is the destroy function. Let's try it. There you go. Now we can collect keys. That was cool. Now let me, let's arrange this so it's a little lower, just, just so you're not stopping in midair. There you go, nice. Now let's set it so you can only open the door if that key is obtained. So let's find this area, the area where you can open the door. It's not this script. There you go, hitbox. Okay, so because this is on another script, we have to add a variable that will communicate with the other script, so this move player script, so they can talk to each other. Because this has to know that that variable can be uh, accessed. So we'll actually go up here and we'll change this from private to public. So now it can be re uh, read by other scripts. has to be a variable key script the name of the script which is move player equals we're gonna have a player as a variable so we'll set that up here so we can assign that in the inspector and get component move player this should be in parentheses there you go. And key script dot, uh, what do we call it? Key one obtained, uh, lowercase o, obtained is true, then destroy the other object. So see if I get an error. No error, we just got a warning. Let's see if it works. 
So I can't open the out. Oh. oh, of course, we didn't assign the variable. Player, there you go. So I cannot open the door. And if we go get the key, there you go. Now we can open the door. All right, so the key's done. Let's add the health system. So I have this heart, uh, heart sprite that I made in Photoshop in five minutes. That's what it looks like. We'll drag this in, but first we have to create a canvas. So the cool thing about Unity's new UI system is it's very powerful. Uh, it takes a little while to get used to. Uh, the way it works is very different than anything that Unity has had before. So whenever you're starting, you have to have a canvas to work on. And the canvas is, uh, it, it's everything's measured according to your screen resolution. And as you adjust it, it adjusts it itself. And you can set anchors, so you can set uh, where the images or the text are going to be positioned on the screen. So it's very helpful. So we'll go up here, game object, UI, and it's gonna be an image. Drag the heart sprite on the source image. Uh, there you go. We'll position it. It's a little big. There you go. Call it heart one. And we're gonna press this anchor button here and we're gonna anchor it to this top left corner. Duplicate it again, control D. We'll do that twice. We're gonna create three sets of hearts. So we can access these later according to how much health we have. So let's go to the move script and add a health variable. So what this means is, uh, this is an integer, so this is what we're going to calculate of how many times we can get hurt or damaged until our character dies. So we're gonna set this to three, so each heart is gonna be associated with a number. So heart one is equal to one, heart two is equal to two, and heart three is equal to three. So we're gonna add a, a spike to um, test this. So let's say, if you hit a spike, Health, lose one. And that's only when you enter it, since we're using on collision enter. It's nice. Let's add the spikes really quick. I have a spike somewhere here. Spike. There you go. Duplicate this a few times. Add some colliders. Make them low so they're fair. A little thinner. And we'll tag them each as spike. I have it as a capital spike. Um, sure. Change in the script. Capital spike. It's good to keep consistent. I didn't do that here, but I recommend. Actually, you know what? The rest of them are lowercase, so I'll change this to lowercase. And I don't think they're tagged anymore. Yep, they are tagged. So we assigned that. And see, what else do we have to do? Oh, yes, uh, the health. So in the if statement, uh, we're going to create an if statement, uh, actually a series of if statements under the function update. So update every frame. If health is equal to three, we will find health one object, get component, it's gonna be ui.image, there it is, okay dot color dot a which is the alpha texture so basically it's transparency and we're going to set that to one let's copy and paste it change the values accordingly and we'll 
assign the rest here. So if it's equal to two, then the third heart is disappeared. And there you go. And if we have no health left, all of them disappear. And we'll tell it to you to do this die function. We don't have that in here yet, but we'll just set something uh, temporary. We're going to uh, add a, a log for the debug function. So nothing will happen, but we'll have a uh, output message that will appear in our console that will tell us that uh, the script is reading that message and it's actually functioning. There you go. Let's see if it works. Oh, we're getting an error. Oh, what am I thinking? I named them health, but I named them heart in the editor. So let's fix that. Health one, capital H. Again, unity is case sensitive. Health two, and health three. All right, let's play it. It works. Let's head over to the, oh, gotta get the key. We'll add the hit detection on the lava, but we can't do that quite yet, and I'll explain why in a second. All right, let's see what happens if we touch the spikes. Okay, nothing happens. Why did nothing happen? Let's find out. Because the tags are undefined. Let me move the player so he spawns closer. All right, there you go. Now he loses his health. Yep, and now it's uh, now it's printing uh, the die output message. Very nice. So that works. We can have him lose health when he hits the lava, but the only problem is that he will keep falling or nothing will happen. He'll just sit there. So we want to make it so whenever you hit an object, uh, the player either bounces or he respawns again and uh, respawns at a checkpoint. We're not programming checkpoints in this video. That's going to be um, later on. But what we will do is make the player bounce. So let me clear my console. And we're going to make it so whenever you get hurt, the player is going to bounce. So let's add the uh, line of code that will make our player bounce whenever we touch an object. Uh, right now, it's just the spike. So let's see. It'll be rigid body 2D. Nope, not that. Dot add force. And it's going to be vector 2 for 2D. Um, and be up. We want it to bounce up, and we'll say about 250. That can vary depending on the size of um, size to scale of your game. So let's place a temporary spike, and let's see what happens when we hit it. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Yep, he's bouncing. Let's make him bounce a little higher. And we will get rid of this uh, debug message. We'll change it to a comment, so uh, double forward slash. So nothing will uh, appear in the console anymore, but we know it works. All right, so I like it. Let's make it jump a little higher. Basically, it just gives the player an opportunity to uh, move out of the way so he doesn't get hurt again. Let's move the spike. And let's do a collider on the lava pit. So let's like this object. Just the collider. Be 1.4. Some simple math. Oh, that math was not right, but okay. Close enough. You're just barely touching that. We'll tag it as a spike, but let's just rename it actually instead of spike to um, hurt. Let's just call it hurt. So we'll re tag everything as hurt 
So everything can be categorized under this object. Uh, and later down the line, we can we can assign it so certain tags apply more damage than others. But that but for now we're just going to set it so each one is just um, everything does the same damage. Okay, let's see if we play it now. Let's see if the lava now hurts us. Again, we got to get the key. Fast forward. All right, very nice. And while we're at it, let's fix the player's animation so the feet are moving uh, with the speed of the player. Oh, that was the idle animation. There you go, walk. Let's just speed everything up. See if that looks any better. There you go. <laughs> Very fast moving player. We'll add one last thing. We'll just make it so when you run out of health, your player dies. We'll do that. So destroy game object. That's all it is. Very simple. One line. And also, we can't prevent the player from falling through the map. So we'll add just an empty game object. We'll call it fallout. Tag it as hurt. Actually, we'll uh, we'll tag it as fallout, which basically functions as a barrier. So if the player falls out of the map, he just respawns um, back uh, to the main spawn area, and he loses a uh, little bit of health. This is how we'll be doing the checkpoint system. So I'll be covering that uh, in the checkpoint video. Um, because that is how we're going to be assigning where the player is spawning. But for now, we'll just tag it as Fallout. I didn't see the tag. Oh, there's already a Fallout. I didn't need to make another one, that's why. And let's say if you touch the object Fallout, Your player, where is he? Where is he positioned right now? Okay, we'll set his uh, coordinates. Let's open this up here. Transform dot position will equal negative one point four, one point nine, and zero. Uh, what am I thinking? It's vector three. It's the only way you can assign it. All right. Let's fall out of the map, see if it works. There you go. And there you go, and he dies. All right, so that's a great place to stop. You can now lose. You can't win yet, but we'll do something special for the flag at the very end. Uh, the flag is programmed the same way that we did with everything else, uh, but we will get to that uh, as this tutorial series goes on. So that's kind of cool. Now we got keys. We can play around with that in the next video, and as we keep adding on to this, this will be a more... A completed game. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.